What are you doing? Oh, my goodness, you didn't half startle me. You wait till old Sharpie gets on to you. She'll startle you, all right. Look at the time. What have you been doing? Get a move on. Don't stand mooning there. Get a move on. Tell you. Tell you. There you are. Now you're for it. What's the matter? Why don't you answer the bell? Lady's too busy watering her flower garden to do any work. Don't blame me if the dinner party's a failure. What's this? What's this? Where did this come from? I found it. Found it. Up to your old tricks again, eh? It was nearly dead. Nobody wanted it. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about my bowl. Oh, no! Yes! What right did you to touch it? It wasn't being used. I only wanted to borrow it. The same sort of borrowing, I suppose, that got you into the reformatory. It wasn't a reformatory. Industrial school, then. Home for good for nothings. You're not going to take it away. My bowl, I most certainly am. My flower, my flower. You can't take it away. So it was, dear. I don't want you, Miss Rupert. There you are. Oh. It's broke. Get on and answer those bells. Ooh, hateful, hateful. If only there was one decent person in the world. But there is. There is. Well, you asked for it. You got it. Oh, shut up. You better get round with your hot waters if you don't want some more trouble. Fat lot I care about them. Well, you know they're all bursting to get down to the engagement party. Engagement party? And him old enough to be her father? Don't forget his champagne. One bottle between eight. Mean old pig. Fat lot of life Miss Vivian's got. If ever she does marry him. She'll marry him all right. Can't afford not to with them parents. Poor Miss Vivian. <coughs> Vivian! <coughs> now, Vivian, you... Oh, well, of course, if you want to see your father in prison, rubbish. I wish it were. Now, darling, why not let me announce the engagement? I can't see any harm in that. Can't you? Well, at least it would, it would tide things over until... Until you could find a higher bidder for me. Don't be indecent. <coughs> darling, uh, will you help me fasten my dress? Look at the way you put it down. You've spilt half of it. Oh, well, you'll have to do with a lick and a promise. I shall report you to Mrs. Sharp. I shouldn't, Mother. She might present the bill. Stacia! Stacia! All right. Come along, hurry up. Whatever have you been doing? Get the bottles out of the cocktails and a jug of water. Is that the Major? Ah, Major Chunky. May I have a word with you? Yeah, lady. The exigencies of the moment. I shan't keep you a second. Sit down. 
May I remind you, Mrs. Sharp, that on this particular occasion I'm rather in a hurry? I seem to have heard that before somewhere. The last time I presented my account, to be precise. I suggest, Mrs. Sharp, uh, that you accept a post-dated check for £100 payable in three months. By which time, the chances are that my daughter will be Mrs. Wright and I shall be in a position to pay. Meanwhile, I go on keeping all three of you. Oh, I put it to you as a gamble. Vivian hesitates, but that's natural. It's uh, family pride, Mrs. Sharp. There is such a thing as family pride. Now, a businessman is always prepared for business, Mrs. Sharp, and um, let me see, today is... Um, There you are. Mind you, if this isn't met... It shall be met, Mrs. Sharp, on the honor of a soldier. I'm putting my trust in Miss Vivian. Chris! Chris! Yes, Vivian? You're... You're not staying in tonight for the dinner, are you? Why not? Don't, please. I hear your Mr. Wright is giving champagne. I don't see why I should miss that. Chris! I may as well seed out to the end. Don't make it any harder for me than it is. If it's so hard, why are you going through with it at all? I can't help myself. Vivian! Aren't you dressed yet? No, Mother. Well, go and finish, then. We mustn't keep Mr. Wright waiting. <laughs> no, no. Mr. Wright mustn't be kept waiting. Vivian. What have you been saying to him? Oh, leave me alone, Mother! How's Vivian? Very edgy. She being difficult? Yes, rather. Well, she's got to come to heel. Is anything wrong? I've just given Sharp a first day to check for a hundred pounds. George! But I had to do something. Well, hurry up and dress. You don't want to be late. No, I don't want to be late tonight. genius provided us with a theme song for this festive occasion? Yes. What do you think of this? For the bride-to-be. I can't give you anything but love, baby. Father's debts are all I've plenty of, baby. <laughs> now, 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 be careful. Don't crack the enamel. Is that pass for wit in your gramophone shop? Yes, please, miss. Good evening, Mrs. Tomkin. May I join you? I'm not interrupting a tete-a-tete, am I? What time did the Major get in last night? About half past eleven, quarter to twelve. Him and old Wright. Drunk? Oh, the usual. A bit fuddled, you know. When are we to be allowed to congratulate dear Vivian on her engagement? Before dinner or after? I really don't quite know what has been decided. Children nowadays, you know. Dear, I do hope nothing's gone wrong. She's worked so hard for it, hasn't she, poor child? Dear Miss Kite, at Vivian's age, hard work isn't necessary. Natural charm and a natural complexion. Ah, oh, dear, I think Vivian's been so wise. Makeup doesn't suit her and, how shall I put it, rather innocent type. But old men do so fall for that, don't they? Look who's honoring us. Baronet's cousin, dear Mrs. Dooley. Oh, I beg her pardon, Mrs. De Hooley. We were just talking about you, dear. I was in two minds about coming down. Bad news. <gasps> oh, what a loss. Not your cousin, the baronet. The Marquis. He was the head of our line. Better not, Miss Kite. They see a lady, they expect something. Stasia, 
You can open the window a little. Oh, go on. Why not pay up and tap yourself properly and enjoy the luxury of feeling honest? Only a hate me each. You do as you're told. Play up, we're all listening. Baggage. What can you expect, considering where she came from? I'm surprised that you're keeping her, Mrs. Sharp. It's all right. I'm just giving her enough room. There you are, you see, it's the type. The little unfortunates always revert to type. And you revert to an old tabby cat. That will do. You know, you're asking for trouble. I don't care. Don't care was made to care. Oh, think I'm afraid. You can only send me back. Well, go on, send me back. I'm sick of having it flung in my face where I came from. Send me back. It wouldn't be any worse than this rotten hole. You'll keep a civil tongue in your head. Well, so it is. And a lot of rotters in it. Look at them. There isn't a decent one among them. You're talking a lot of nonsense you don't know anything about. And I don't want to know. They're not human, that lot. None of us are. Look at you. You're an old thief. How dare you? Oh, I, I'm just as bad. Worse. What are we all living for? That's what I want to know. What's the good of us? Miss Kite's perfectly right. You're a useless little slut and you'll go back to the gutter where you came from. All right. I will. Now. Stasia, come back. Where do you think you're going? The river. Anywhere out of here. <laughs> good evening. What do you want? I understand you have a room to let. Well, we haven't. What is it? What are you putting at? He wants the room. Room? What room? To set our back. Set? Who is it? Who's he? Well, what's he like? A gentleman? Here, I'd better go. I'm afraid there's been a bit of a mistake. You see, my Good maid... Good evening. Was... Good evening. As I was saying, my maid put the card up unknown to me. But you have a room to let? As a matter of fact, uh, do you mind coming along to the office? Thank you. After you. Thank you. Now then. Oh, thank you. Now then. Now we can talk business. To begin with, I know you'll excuse the question. What are you? I, I'm a wanderer. Oh, you mean a traveller? Yes, a traveller. Uh, for a pleasure, or...? Mm -hmm. For pleasure. Are you from abroad? I've seen so much of the world. Uh, what we call a cosmopolitan. Exactly. You see, I have to be a bit particular. We try to keep ourselves rather, if I may say so, on the select side here. You see, we have the army represented in the person of Major Tomkinson family. Then there is big business in the person of Mr. Wright. I expect you've heard of Wright's housing estates in Poplar, one of the most populated districts, very remunerative. I'm sure. Then there is uh, Mr. Penny, rising our architect. Oh, I'm forgetting Mrs. Stahouli. Her second cousin by marriage is the baronet, you know. Hmm. I live so out of the world. Then there's Miss Kite, one of the moderns, and Mr. Larkham, interested in music on the commercial side. Yes, I think we can claim to be a very representative little circle here. I shall be glad to meet them. Of course, you'll understand that my charges are a little higher than the ordinary boarding house. Of course. For the room I have to offer you, overlooking my little back garden, very quiet, lots of fresh air. Yes, very quiet indeed. And lots of fresh air. I usually ask two pounds ten a week. To you, seeing the time of year, shall we say two pounds? Is that quite fair? Fair? I mean, to you, I can afford to pay your proper price. The two pounds will be quite satisfactory. 
Quite sure? Quite. It's very kind of you. Very kind indeed. Light, of course, will be extra. Of course. And gas. Of course. I leave myself entirely in your hands. I shall be safe. How peaceful. You like London? Oh, yes, I like it very much. Then you'll take this room? If you will have me, of course. Let me see. You will want some money in advance, won't you? Oh, thank you very much. I'll give you your receipt later. Thank you. By the way, we're having a little party tonight. Mr. Wright, the property owner I spoke to of, is getting engaged to Major Tompkins' daughter. How oh, charming. Very much in love? Well, it's a good match from both points of view. So we're having a party. Throwing the tables together and all being very sociable. I hope you won't mind. Just for tonight. I should be delighted. 7.30 then. Thank you. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll find us a very strange galère. Oh, thank you. But there, it takes all kinds to make a world, doesn't it? Mm. And all so interesting. I feel we're going to have a great deal in common. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Haven't we met somewhere? Monty, 1927, perhaps. My dear husband's cousin, Sir Humphrey, you know, had the Villa Banana. now. Almost everyone was there at one time or another during the season. I wasn't. Were you right? Hmm? You must find it very crude over here. Even in the best hotels, one is liable to meet with every class of individual. As I was saying to the dear Duchess, Ladies and gentlemen, I should like to say a few words. As you may or may not all know, I'm a man of property. Oh, I make no bones about it. I'm a self-made man, and every penny I've made has gone into the safest thing I know. Bricks and mortar. Safety first, that's my motto. They could strike. They can go on the dole, they can play Old Harry with the country, but they must have a roof over their heads. <laughs> and they say, you can't collect in the poor districts, don't tell me. I've collected for the past 15 years, and I shall go on collecting. It's all a matter of character. And so, take my tip, ladies and gentlemen, and put your money in bricks and mortar, and keep it there. Well, uh, having got that off my chest, I... Uh, 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 oh, yes, uh, uh, here, here. Well, I'm going to make a little confession. I suppose every man makes a fool of himself some time in his life. <laughs> oh, more than once. Well, my turn's come now. <laughs> I needn't tell you what my little spot of bother is, or how I feel about it. But uh, all I can say is it's got me pretty bad. To the tune of 500 quid, to be precise. Hooray! Tied up to this little bit of nonsense. Perhaps some of the ladies would like to have a look. Oh, how fun. <laughs> Extraordinary. <laughs> ah, just like the dear Duchesses. <laughs> Flawless. You're like a girl. Excuse me, young lady. He's fond of pretty things. Give me back at once. Good luck, sir. Good luck, lady. May all your troubles be little ones. Go away. For the music. We don't give to beggars. Clear out, my man, or we put the police on your track. We hate it. Go away. We don't encourage foreigners. Oh, you fat belly lot of swine. Oh, miserable lot of devils. I hope your food chokes you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I give you a toast. 
to the future Mrs. W. Good luck. Your health. Yes. Your health. Mrs. W. Well, aren't you going to put it on? I've had enough of this. I'm off. Come, come, my dear. You go on after her. I'll look after him. Well, really. Extraordinary performance. Wasn't the ring good enough for her, or what? Well... <laughs> Shall we take coffee in the drawing room? My dear fellow, you mustn't take it like that. Oh, what do you expect me to do? Laugh and clap hands? Don't you see what it means? Yes, as plain as the nose on your face. She hates my guts. Nonsense, my dear fellow, not at all. It's just nerves. <laughs> nerves. Uh, wait a minute. <clears throat> I'll bet you what you like. She's up there on her bed, crying her eyes out, and wondering what on earth she can do to make it up with you again. Oh. Yes, yes, my dear fellow. Oh, mother. You don't seem to realize we're all going to be turned into the street by that horrible woman. They'd all be sniggering and whispering. What did you think of that dress she was wearing tonight? Not a penny under 20. My dear, I wish I could afford that dressmaker's bill. Must be enormous. <laughs> Poor thing. She needed it. Rather reminiscent of a prize rabbit, don't you think? <laughs> oh, you clumsy slut. Well, it's your own fault. You shouldn't put it on the floor. What's the table for? You little prison rat. A lot you know about tables or anything else where you come from. But I certainly haven't learned much here. Now, run away, run away now. Don't be impertinent. May I have your cup, please? Thank you. Oh, may I help you? I think. I'm there. I'm afraid you're in for a disappointment. I beg your pardon? That child. I like her. <laughs> it does you credit, of course. But isn't that the uh, teeniest bit out of date? What do you mean? Can one extend one's sympathies outside one's own class like that? Perhaps it's because of my wider experience. Oh, granted, granted. But human nature is human nature all the world over. And you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. <laughs> How admirably expressed, dear Mrs. de Hooley. Remember that, my dear man, won't you? Good night, Mother. Good night, darling. Somehow it was 
just like that music. And then he said, thank you. That's something I haven't heard these six months, nor I'm not likely to. Perhaps I'm wrong, but somehow I think things are going to be different. Oh, uh, please, may I? I'm so sorry for what happened tonight. I do hope you don't think we're always like that. No, no, I understand. Good night. Good night. Could I speak to you for a moment? Of course. Will you come in? How beautiful. Do you mind telling me what you know about her? What I know? What's the influence you have over her? I watched her all through dinner. She never took her eyes off you. You are wrong. I watched her too. It was you who was in her mind. And she's very unhappy. Oh, I know, I behaved pretty badly. But it wasn't just that. Believe me, it was. Will you forgive me if I speak frankly? I'm a stranger to you. And because of that, perhaps I'm able to see you all a little more clearly than you see yourself. You love each other, but for some reason, you are denying it. Well, there's not much mystery about it as far as she's concerned, is there? She's turning me down for a better match. That's not what I saw. Oh? Well, what did you see? Another motive. Not the selfish one. You mean she's sacrificing herself for her parents? Partly, but also for another. I thought it was for you. Oh, what's the good of talking about it? You're quite right, of course. And it's my fault. She thinks she's saving my career. She thinks if we marry, it'll be a failure. And I made her think it. I put it into her head because I hadn't the courage to accept the responsibility of marriage. And those ghastly parents. I've been a complete spineless lunatic. The hell of it is that I've only realized it when it's too late. Is it too late? Oh, of course it's too late. She despises me. She thinks I'm a moral card. I don't believe that. Do you think... No. I know how I let her down. I shouldn't waste time on regrets. Good night. What's the motto? Catch them young, treat them rough, and tell them nothing. <laughs> Well, good night, future father-in-law. Good night, my son-in-law. Hello. Hello. Come in here a sec. It's too late. Oh, no, no. Come on.
knew it's going to be a scorcher today. Yes, some's going to enjoy their bank holiday. Good morning. Oh, good morning, sir. Lovely day for bank holiday, isn't it? Yes, lucky for everyone. Yes, I hate it when it rains. It spoils it, says for the kids. Where are you going today? Me? Mm -hmm. Oh, I never get out on bank holidays. They're all at home, you see. I see. Of course. When I was a kid, I used to go out. We used to go down to Battersea Park and watch the steamers on the river. Once we were going on one to Hampton Court with the Sunday school treat. But I got the mumps and another girl had to take my place. She brought me back some lovely roses. They were a bit dead, but you could still smell them. Excuse me, they wait. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, old man. Good morning. How do you like our London weather? It's a beautiful day, isn't it? The day for the country or the sea. Well, you wait till this afternoon. It's going to be a regular scorcher. You won't be able to breathe. Oh, good morning. Good morning. It's going to be a lovely day, I think. I've put you at that table over there. Uh, uh... There? Thank you. Do you mind if I open the window? <coughs> your friend with the gramophone again, Mr. Larkin. I believe it's a publicity stunt. You're not suggesting that's one of our records, are you? Isn't it? It has the same delightful, scratchy sound. Hey! Can't you play something more modern? Tiger like rag or something. Have a look at this. What's all the excitement? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Gosh, what a lovely sky. Almost Mediterranean, isn't it? Never seen it, except on the pictures. Still, I wouldn't mind being there. Phew, it's hot. You Londoners are so lucky to have your river. That's an idea. I've a good mind to get a boat out for the day. It'd be hard work pulling a boat. What about a steamer? Steamer? Well, that's more like your Uncle Harry. Why shouldn't we all go? On a steamer? Yes, down the river to the sea. I mean, as my guests. Well, that's very nice of you, old man. Do you mean everybody? Yes. I think that's a splendid idea. What about you, Miss Kite? Me? Oh, well, if it's going to be a party. It would give me great pleasure. I'd love to. And Stasia. Me? Stasia? Why not? If Mrs. Sharp can spare you. Well, I don't know what the Tompkins are doing, or Mr. Ride or... Oh, leave it to me. <laughs> and Mrs. Tehooley. Won't you change your mind? Yes, do, Mrs. Tehooley. But I... You don't, you don't want me. Of course we want you. The party would be incomplete without you. You can act as cook's guide for us. Well, I, I really don't know what to say. You Please must come. come, really. You must come. Oh, oh you must come, you must. Whatever well, says you want. They're all going on the river. Oh. Everybody, Mr. Tehooley and Miss Kite, your Chris, and even old Sharpie herself. The new lodge is throwing a party. And they say, if you go, I can go. Oh, Stasia, you... But it's a fact, really. What's all this 
just about. Oh, there's a party. You're all invited. It's free. Where? On the river. But it's free. Free. I think I'll go. Did you? After last night. Run along, Stasia, and say I should love to. Oh, what about you two? I really think it sounds a jolly good idea. Sure. Why not? It's free. They're all going. But me, sir, I am not Mr. Wright. Oh, I see. I'll go and ask him now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I can arrange this. It may be a chance to patch things up. Oh, come on. Come on. I'll fix it. Come in. Hello, old fella. Shh. I say. Feeling rotten? Horrible. Oh, that's bad. We must do something about that. Nothing. Bad. Nonsense, we can't have that. We've got a big day in front of us. What about a trip to Margit? Margit? Please. Oh, make him say it. Make him say it. Make him say it. Make him say it. So you see, my dear fellow, it's absolutely perfect. Invigorating breezes, romantic surroundings, Vivian, repentance. Plenty of opportunities for tete-a-tete, -tete, return home, triumphant. I don't believe a word of it, but you win. I fixed it. You said Vivian was sorry for her behavior. She's been deliberately avoiding me ever since we got on the boat. My dear fellow, when will you realize that there's a time and a place for everyone? Extraordinarily green the water is. Yes, isn't it? I was a swine last night. It's all right, Chris. I know how you felt. But that's no excuse for me trying to hurt you. Oh, please, darling. You're not going on with it now, are you? I don't know. Oh, you can't. Don't you see how difficult it is? What will happen to mother and father? Oh, there must be a way out for us without hurting them. Oh, I've thought and thought about it till I can't think anymore. Chris, I shan't be able to bear it if I have to lose you. Vivian, you won't have to. I'll find a way. We must find a way, darling. If only we could. Oh, it's so hot. There's a nice breeze, though. Yes. Oh, look! <laughs> Did you see the 
tiny town, those walls were 18 feet thick. If they locked you up in there, you could scream your insides out and they'd never hear you. Isn't it wonderful? Thank you, Mrs. Dooley, a cushion. They have a good girl. A cushion. I'll show you where. No, no, please. Sit <laughs> down. Will you be comfortable there? Thank you. This intolerant sun, I mean. It's beautiful. Uh, women of my age have to think of these little things. I'm going to make you a confession. You'll probably think it very outre of me. You interest me. I'm so glad. Are you? Why? I wanted to interest you. You are clever. You have a wit. And a witty woman can be the best friend in the world. You think I'm clever? Most certainly. And witty? Indeed. Don't you mean catty? No, no. A little caustic, perhaps. I suppose one grows bitter as one grows old. Old? Yes, old. Wrong side of 30. Now, for goodness sake, don't start telling me it's a beautiful age. I couldn't bear it. Beauty is not a matter of age. Oh, yes, it is. Age is ugly. It's no good talking a lot of nonsense to me about the beauty of the mind or the soul. I never wanted that. I only wanted... I... Uh, I care for this complete disregard of decency nowadays. You don't agree? If you mean those children. Children? They seem to be very happy. I'm afraid I'm not very interested in child welfare. Or in children at all, if it comes to that. Or in life? Life? I've told you. Life is a fraud. <laughs> Oh, I don't believe it. What? Do 
something. Do something, can't you? Here, let's get Swallow it down. What is it? Never mind. Get it down. <laughs> oh, it'll make me drunk. Well, better a drunk hero than a dead one, as the poet says. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. Oh, you can be as modest as you like. That was a real fine bit of work. There's not many would have had the pluck. That's very nice of you, Mr. Lark. And it wasn't only the doing it, it was the way you did it. No fuss and nonsense. That's the kind I like. You're making me very embarrassed. Oh, heavens! Don't do that. You look grand. What's all this? She's asleep. It might be the old days, when Vivian was a kid. George, I've been wondering if we're doing right about her. I know. I was thinking about it when the accident happened. I felt as if I were losing my own child. I don't know why, but I've been quite excited. The scare, I suppose, the crowd. Why can't let oneself go in a crowd? Come on, come on, Sister Hooray. We're nearly in. I don't think I'll go ashore. Good gracious me, why not? Well, I'm not feeling myself. You're missing all the fun. Come and join in. You will soon feel better. Well, if you think so. Is everything all right, dear? I feel a bit odd. Mr. Larkham, you've been leading me astray. <laughs> <laughs> the hoop is gone. Did you hear it? Oh, uh, I forgot to give it to Beck. Wouldn't you like to keep it? Me? Yes. Or don't you think it's good enough? It's not good enough. Isn't there some other way out? Well, of course there's a way. Work. That's easy enough to say. Oh, that traveler's job that Stevens offered to me? Don't be absurd. You couldn't stand that for a week. Well, of course I should. If it were for all of us. It's better than selling one's own flesh and blood. Hold it, sir. Hold it. Thank you. Now, what shall we call the picture? Love's young dream? <laughs> Dreaming you'd come into a fortune or something? No, I, I was wanting uh, to talk to you. That little arrangement we made. I think it would be better if we settled the matter by direct payment. Oh, what's the idea? What's the matter with the way we fixed it? Well, uh, 
on thinking things over, I don't feel justified in asking Vivian to make the sacrifice. Sacrifice? Yesterday it was an honor. Well, what I really mean is that... Well, I, I don't think we need argue about it. That's how we feel. You'll excuse us, won't you? I see. Well, it's up to you. had a successful day. Hmm. They look tired, but happy. I mean you. You've done your stuff very nicely, haven't you? You mean given them a good time? You know what I mean. Perhaps I do. It's not easy for them to find themselves. The illusions are so strong. You mean the realities? They can't see them now. It's all lovely and rosy, star and moonshine. You've got them all gooey and dripping with sentiment. That's all right. Wait till the morning. Wait till they have to face a few cold facts in the light of day. I'll give you best tonight, my turn in the morning. How long are you going to be in there? Good morning. I'm afraid I first claim. But look at the time. I'm sorry, that's his fault. He's been in there half an hour. But I have an appointment at 9.30. And I have to be in the office at 9. Oh, have you? Well, listen. Now then, now then. Little birds in their nests. I can't think what you've been doing in there, judging by the result. Excuse me. Well, hello, she pipped you there. Losing your pep, aren't you? Oh, dear, what love can do. Stasia? Oh, good morning, Mr. Rice. That girl. Playing you up a bit this morning? Eh? That's the result of yesterday. She began the morning by getting up late. Yeah, always the same. Give them an inch and they'll take an L. Oh, is that the accounts you're making up, Angela? Yes. Well, I'll settle mine now, if you like. Oh, thank you, Mr. Rice. That's very kind no, of you. No, 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 not at all. I'm sure it'll be welcome. Just 20 pounds. Uh, 20 pounds. Right. I wish they were all as prompt as you are. <laughs> Nothing dud about this check. Of course not. I wouldn't say the same about another one you're holding, though. But... Particularly if you're counting on me as security. Oh. Yes, O's the word. Because he'll never be able to pay you. We'll see about that. Well, with a bit of luck, you were able to get such a nice lot for your third floor back. I suppose he had good credentials, hmm? What? Well, anyway, you won't be missing me now if I go. Oh, Mr. Wright, you're not leaving us, are you? Well, I don't know. I don't somehow like the atmosphere the last few days. Too much of the kiss-me-hardy stuff for my liking. I think I might be better out of it. Oh, don't say that, Mr. Wright. Mm, well, uh, we'll see. Oh, Nosey, what's up? I heard. Did you? Well, you ought to be pleased. Me? Yes, if Vivian does turn me down. I shall have some bits and pieces to chuck away. Pooh. When are you coming up to have a look at them, eh? Ah, oh, when? Coming. 
Sorry about that bathroom. Made you a bit rushed, didn't it? Certainly did. I thought so. Give the old girl a chance. Oh dear, oh dear, we are putting our feet in it this morning, aren't we? Caught his girlfriend having a dip in the rouge box. <laughs> Sorry, old man, didn't know it was a case of love's young dream. <laughs> See? I wasn't so far wrong, was I? What are you going to do about it? What do you expect me to do? Well, how about uh, a little lecture? Lecture them? Because they are upset? I see. Too high and mighty to interfere this morning, eh? <laughs> oh. then, now then, and what about a little service? All oh, right, I'm not an eight-handed octopus. Morning. Uh, any mail for me? I put it on your table, Mr. Crimson. No luck. Have you won? Competition work, hmm? Yes. Why do you waste your time with that stuff? The idea, Mr. Wright, is to make a little money. Money? There isn't any money for you in that. Not for some years, anyway. <laughs> You've got talent. Why don't you do something about it? What exactly? Do a job, make some dough. Spend it? How? That's easy. If you've got the guts. Sugar? Thank you. Plenty of room in the building trade for qualified men. With brains. Designing jerry-built houses, I suppose. Don't talk soft. There's a thousand and one jobs you could do for me. What with all these new regulations and whatnot. You mean you can make use of my name and qualifications to cover up your dodging of the Housing Reform Act? Uh, milk? I mean I've got a contract waiting for somebody who's capable of holding down a fat job at a good screw. And that's straight enough, isn't it, Milk? It's hardly the word I should have chosen. Thank you. Would you care to have a squint at that contract? I'm sorry. I'm not your man. Well, there's no hurry. Think it over. Danger! Hello? Anything wrong? Oh, dear, I'm in a terrible state. My cameo brooch is missing. Ah, there you are, you see? Oh, dear. You don't think it's been stolen, do you? Who do you think could have taken it? Don't ask me. Well, you've got to expect something with all the riffraff we're getting in this place now. <gasps> Stay here. Good morning, Mrs. Tahoney. Have you seen my cameo brooch? Me? Yes, you. No, Mrs. Tahoney. I haven't set eyes on it since... Isn't I she's afraid of? It's fingers. Here, do you think I took it? Well, someone's taken it, haven't they? But why me? You wouldn't expect me to accuse one of the guests, would you? After all, it wouldn't be surprising, considering where you've come from. What's this? What's all this noise? You're all old hypocrites. All smarmy one day and telling me I'm a thief the next. Who's a thief? What is this? I'm sick of it! Stay Well, I'm the softy. What do I want to go straight for? Better be like the rest of them. Take my chance while I've got it and clear out. Here, here. You don't stay sharp. Would somebody mind telling me what this is all about? I've lost my brooch. Your cameo brooch? Yes, sir. It's in the letter rack. I picked it up in the passage last night and popped it in for oh. you. Really, <laughs> Mrs. Dehooney, I do think you should take more care of your things. One of these days you'll really lose something. Wolf! 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 Well, it's all right. Just a friendly word of warning. Old Sharp's on the warpath this morning. 
What do you mean? She's heard something. I don't think she's so keen on that post-dated check as she was. Not unless you find a new security. Just to warn you, you know. What's that? My lord, we were fools to quarrel with him. We? Oui. I thought it was your noble gesture. You know perfectly well that I should never have done it if it hadn't been for you going all sentimental. <laughs> so that's our little hero, is it? For goodness sake, don't sit up in bed there nagging. Oh, may I have a word with him? Yes. Well, I've yes. spent half my life looking after you. And what do I get for it? You'll be quiet. Oh, Vivian. Listen, I want to tell you. You see? It's no good, Chris. He can't risk it. Oh, I'm sorry. But it's true. A month ago, I might have faced it. But you weren't so sure then. And now I've lost my courage. I couldn't face a life like Mother's. You mean you think I might turn out like your father? Oh, we both should without money. You said so yourself. I never said that, Vivian. I never said it. I... <laughs> oh, what is it? Oh. What are you laughing at? This is so like one of the scenes I've been listening to all my life. Oh, no. Don't be angry, Chris. Listen. Don't you see? It's for your sake as much as for mine. I don't want either of us to be, to be like they are. I want you to go on and do all the things that you want to do. To be a great success and a great man. I want you to build those hospitals. Which you, as a profiteer slum landlord's wife, will come and open, I suppose. Now, you listen to me. If you're going to give up your ideals and everything else for the sake of comfort and safety, I'm going to do the same. I had a nice little offer today from your Mr. Wright. What? To take over this slum property and do a little faking to get round the new acts. Well, what are you looking so miserable about? You'll get your share of it? You can sell yourself? Why shouldn't I? Anyway, that's what I'm going to do tonight. If I haven't put a bullet through his head before that. You know the old saying, don't you, Major? The Lord helps them who help themselves. Don't you see the hole you're putting me into? Give that bell another push for me, will you? There's a limit to what a man in my position will swallow. Not if someone else pays. Oh. He'll be all right after he's had a couple. Oh, there you are. I want some more whiskey. Well, I don't think I ought to get it without asking Sharpie. Oh? Scared of her? The fact that I care for her, or any of them, if it comes to that. Oh, that's how we're feeling, eh? That's the stuff. Here. Come here a sec. Did you mean what you said? What? You know, what you said about not being a softy. Depends. Come here, kid. I'm all right where I am. Now, come on. What's up today? Got the blues? Bit different today, all of them, from yesterday, hmm? A lot of hypocrites. Yes, you might have thought they were human, mightn't you? Must have had a touch of the sun or something. You know, kid, one of these days you'll find out who your real friends are. Who's that? Don't forget, later. Well, what is it? Can I speak to you? All right. Well, 
Meia citão. É o pijama. You have a great influence in this house. You can't say I didn't warn you. Do you get any pleasure out of spoiling their lives? Lots. And your own? Don't you worry about me. My troubles, I settle for myself. What about your ambitions? A home, affection, respect? I'm trusting to my money to buy those. A home, perhaps. And a wife. Perhaps. They wouldn't satisfy you. You want to achieve, not buy. You were poor once, weren't you? Do you see that? Bread and dripping, that's the best thing I put in there for the first 12 years of my life. And not too much of that either. And do you see those? Plenty of good solid leather there, hmm? Plenty. Well, till I left school, I never had a pair of boots to my name. If the charity lady ever gave me any, they were popped too sweet. Everything I've got, I've earned. With these. And with this. There you are. What do you mean, there you are? That's what you will want to go on doing. Achieving things with this. You know perfectly well. It's not you they respect, but your money. That's your unhappiness. Huh? And what's yours? I'll tell you what it is. You want to change all their natures, don't you? Mm. Oh, yes, you do. Only you want them to do it for themselves. It's no good for you otherwise, is it? They'd only go back on you the moment you left them. No. Oh, yes, they would. It'd be different if I did it, wouldn't it? You'd like me to let old Tompkin off his debts and release Vivian from her promise. And probably you'd like me to settle everyone else's affairs for him. Adopt that slavey and bring her up to be a lady. And all out of my own goodness of heart. It would make you... I know. It would make me happy. Well, I don't want that kind of happiness, see? They cannot endure. They are not strong enough. Well, go on. You help them. If you want it so much. I... I... No, you mustn't interfere. Whatever happens, you must not interfere. Well, wait and see what's going to happen. And before very long, too. I've got them all there. They'll all come crawling to me before the night's out. What'll you bet? Vivian, Penny, Tompkin? And the kid, your dear little Stasia, she'll come. What about that? You can't do this. Oh, why not? It's up to her. No one's forcing her. Anyway, it's bound to happen sooner or later. Why are you trembling? I'm afraid. Who for? For you. So much evil set free. It will destroy. Who? Me? Yes. Who cares? I don't want your sympathy. Keep it for those that need it. Do you hear?
so you decided to come. I expect it's all I have. What? What's that? Those presents you were talking about. I bet they're a have. Well, we'll see. Come on in. Come on, what's up? Afraid? No one saw you, did they? Where is everybody? All in their kennels. I know them. I know them all. Mr. Wright. What is it? What are you staring at? You look so queer. Aren't you well? Nothing wrong with me. All right, I'll see them all out. All this lot, anyhow. Come on. Yeah. It's you. I thought you said she... she's here somewhere. I swear it. I heard her scream. She must be in that room. Let's go and see. What did I tell you? What are you doing here? What's wrong? Oh. Another party? Why wasn't I told? How did it happen? It wasn't me. What are you doing in here? Yes, what? Nothing. No need to ask what you were going to do. <gasps> oh, no, you don't. I saw her creep past my room. I knew there was something wrong. Look at this. I found it on the dressing table. The ring's gone. Where is it? I haven't got it. Come on. Where is it? You better own up. I haven't got it. I have got the ring with Vivian. Oh, stay. Now, don't sympathize with her. Come on, out with it. How did it happen? Come on, you must know. You were in here. Where's that ring? Only one thing to be done. Hand her over to the police. No. Yes, call the police. Yes. No, 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 no. no. The police. Not them, not them. They'll send me back. Oh, I couldn't go back there. I couldn't. You don't know what it's like. <laughs> oh, How please. dare you be so cruel? Can't you see you are terrifying this child out of her life? It's our duty to call the police. She is a little criminal, isn't she? She is a human being like yourselves. Are you so very much better than she? 
What the devil do you mean? You, for instance, with your debts and your fears and your revolver in your pocket, and you signing away your honor to a man you despised, and you who were prepared to sell yourself, and you who would have allowed it, and you and you. How can you hurt and torment this child when you yourselves... That's quite enough. She's got the ring. And she was the only one with him. She has not got the ring. It is here. He's got the ring. Ah, oh, now we understand the loving interest in the little orphan. <laughs> yes, why didn't want us to send for the police? <laughs> Old friends, I expect. <laughs> we'll soon see. <laughs> What you like about me. But not him. Not him. Mrs. Sharp. Mrs. Sharp. Yes? Mrs. Sharp. You're wanted. The police. Are you the landlady? Yes, this is my house. There's been an accident. Someone's fallen from a window. Window? Looks as though it might be from this room here. This explains it. Oh, the gramophone man. My shoulder. Uh, tell me, what happened? He ain't dead, is he? I swear I didn't mean to hurt him. Suddenly, he crumpled up like... It must have been his heart or something. It was his fault. Always flashing that ring around. Anybody in my shoes could have had a go for it. <laughs> that other fella. Ask him. He saw it. Yeah. I stood there, staring at me. Face it out, he says. Wish I had. Yes, sir. Tea? That's a bright idea. It's like seeing for the first time, as if we'd always been blind. It's going to be all right now. Yes. I wonder, do you think he'd join us? Let's go and find him. Will you come with me?
It was so nice of you to come. I came because you wanted me. <laughs> 